It appears the inevitable has happened. Jonathan Majors is no longer a part of the MCU, no longer going to portray Kang moving forward. And, you know, I think Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios have been preparing for this for quite some time. They're doing a major revamp on what the MCU is not only on the big screen, but also on Disney Plus as well. They basically halted a lot of stuff right now. They're reconfiguring some of their movies. They pushed everything back out of 2024 other than Deadpool 3. And I don't think we're gonna make our way to the Kang Dynasty. Although that is not 100% at this time, but we do have some of the details and the fallout of Jonathan Major's uh, legal troubles and the fallout of his conviction recently. Jonathan Majors is out at Marvel Studios and a stunning career blow for the once rising actor on December 18th, a Manhattan jury found Majors guilty of reckless assault in the third degree and guilty of harassment following a two-week trial that stemmed from a March incident between the actor and his ex-partner, Grace Jabari. Before his March arrest, Majors was positioned as the key figure in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the Disney-owned studio building its entire current star arc around Majors' Kang the Conqueror. That's right, Kang the Conqueror was introduced in the Loki TV show, the very first season. We got to meet the character, I believe, in the last episode, or maybe the last two. Uh, and he very much reminded me of the architect from that uh, terrible Matrix movie, except he was a little bit more interesting. But me personally, I wasn't completely impressed with Kang and what they were doing with the character. And certainly, I think having Kang fall at the hands of Ant-Man and an army of uh, gigan gigantic ants that had evolved over time in Ant-Man of the Wasp Quantumania wasn't probably good for the character. So me personally, I don't think there was a lot of momentum heading towards like King Dynasty, certainly not like there was with Thanos, where every time you saw him, you're like, oh my goodness, things are building up and building up. And he's this bigger, bigger threat. Now we know he's after the Infinity Stones, and now we know he's got one. What's he going to do? How is he going to get the, his hands on the rest? And you're like, oh my goodness, we're, we're moving towards this enormous inevitable conflict between the Avengers and Thanos, basically for the survival of half the universe because he wanted to kill everybody. Not really that kind of momentum for this character. I uh, showed up, was really weird in Loki season one, was defeated by the Ant-Man in Quantumania, and then I guess he was in season two of Loki, which me personally I haven't watched because I thought season one uh, was so overwhelmingly disappointing despite having Tom Hiddleston. Uh, more Tom Hiddleston than you can handle. Uh, somehow they got it wrong. It just wasn't all that interesting. So I didn't watch season two. But this is a good time to reset. They fired uh, the writer, the director for Kang Dynasty. They brought in a new writer. I imagine we're going to be getting a new director and a new direction moving forward for uh, the MCU, which they definitely need because there is basically no momentum. They actually had a movie perform worse than a DCEU movie. Uh, it's absolutely flabbergasting to where we got to the point where the Marvel barely was able to squeak by like $200 million worldwide. And uh, that was basically an enormous black eye for Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios, in the MCU. And it didn't feel like Kang was going to pull them out of that. And certainly there are some places that they can go uh, moving forward. Marvel has two courses it could take now. It could recast a part, although it's not clear how many actors would be attracted to a role from which one actor was so publicly fired. The other course is to redevelop its plans and refocus on a brand new villain. While Marvel sources are mum. There is indication that the studio has already been doing just that. In November, Marvel hired Loki creator Michael Waldron to work on a new draft of what was once called King Dynasty, but is now being referred to as Avengers 5, according to sources. The studio has had months to plan for such an eventuality, and it's possible that Waldron was part of that course correction. Certainly, we have heard the rumblings out there that there was a great possibility that Disney and Marvel Studios were going to cut bait on Jonathan Majors and King moving forward. Now there is, or at least there are some rumors out there that uh, Marvel Studios could uh, choose to recast the character of Kang, uh, considering that he exists basically you know, like in the fabric of space and time and stuff. Like you could certainly get away with uh, just changing the look of the character and this just being an evolution of who Kang is, you know, because he survives throughout time. It would be pretty easy to do that. But it sounds like a lot of what they've been doing is pivoting away from Kang, a character and villain that wasn't picking up a lot of momentum along the way anyway. And I don't think it was going to be all that compelling of a big threat considering he was already defeated by basically the weakest Avenger. You know, just ask his family. If you watch Quantumania, they all think Ant-Man is a joke, but we're supposed to take seriously that the big th bad, the Thanos level threat that was out there was so easily defeated. Will we see Kang or a mention of him in the future? I'm not really sure. The good news is Marvel Comics specifically have a great 
a library of villains that are very powerful and very dangerous that are also well known, certainly more well known than Kang, that haven't even been touched yet. The, the two big ones that come to mind, obviously, for like an Avengers level threat are Galactus and, and Doctor Doom. Now, those two characters are a little bit more associated with the Fantastic Four who will be making their debuts in the MCU in a couple years' time. Obviously, they're working on that. It sounds like they're getting the casting nailed down. I believe the script is done. Obviously, there'll be some rewrites and stuff like that. And we do know that Galactus and Doctor Doom are both being uh, cast right now for that movie. I think there's a very, very good chance that it ends up being Doctor Doom. He is the most high-profile villain we really haven't seen uh, within the MCU itself. He's a great threat, certainly a threat to the Avengers and everybody else out there. A very charismatic character, really interesting stuff about him. Never really seen a great portrayal of Doom on the big screen. Obviously, we saw it in the original Fantastic Four, uh, not so much. And then Fantastic Four stick or whatever they called the reboot or whatever they did. Uh, they got him completely wrong. He just all of a sudden had powers. Uh, that, was a, that was a weird movie. Four stick is like they got it right for about 45 minutes and then everything falls apart that way. So hopefully... They have a better plan moving forward for uh, Dr. Doom under the leadership of Kevin Feige, who is supposedly the Marvel guru, but I'm finding that harder and harder to believe. Obviously, Galactus is the world eater, and perhaps he'll be the bigger threat that's kind of waiting out there on the periphery that you know the, the Avengers are going to have to get to eventually, but more, more than likely after the Secret Wars reboot or whatever. So there are some really good villains and certainly a couple that have been talked about. Dr. Doom is the one that almost feels right to this as the fallout of Jonathan Majors being fired uh, by Marvel Studios, no longer going to portray King moving forward, and certainly we're not moving forward towards uh, King Dynasty unless they decide to recast the character, which it doesn't sound like it's going to happen, although there are some rumors that perhaps it could. Majors was arrested on March 25th after he called 911 saying he found his ex-partner, Grace Jabari, in their New York apartment unconscious. Uh, police said they found injuries on Jabari, including a bruised and fractured finger and a cut behind an ear. Majors pled not guilty to all charges. In the wake of his legal troubles, PR firm, the lead company, and his managers at Entertainment 360 dropped the actor. He is still rep by WME, but that could change in light of the verdict. And it was a very strange story indeed. Lots of he said, she said. And then there was recently some emails or texts that came out that did not portray Mr. Majors in a very positive light. And I think at that point, I think a lot of people realized the writing was on the wall. This likely was not going to go in his favor. And I think Disney and Marvel Studios kind of knew that one all along. And it certainly sounds like a lot of the people associated with him in Hollywood, as far as his representation, all that stuff, had already seen some of the evidence and saw that it didn't paint a very good light and decided to uh, move on themselves. And, um, you know, hey, the guy had a pretty promising career at one point. He was going to be the next enormous threat for the Avengers. He had a big part in Creed 3. And I know he had some other movies that have also been canceled or pulled uh, from distribution as of late, as everybody is kind of taking a hands-off approach with Jonathan Majors moving forward. I personally do believe in redemption. I do believe in second chances. Uh, we will see what happens with this. I do think it's funny that you still got Ezra Miller out there that went on a one-man crime spree basically across the world. And uh, his movie still came out, and he's still got to be The Flash. And nothing really happened to him, but it sounds like Mr. Majors will not be getting off of this one scot-free. Certainly has taken an enormous, an enormous reputational hit as far as the future of his career in Hollywood. But that is the big news. Avengers King Dynasty, likely not to happen unless they decide to recast the character. Some rumblings on that, but way more rumblings that Marvel had already decided to cut bait and move on from Kang had already changed out the creative team that was associated with Avengers 5, no longer calling it King Dynasty, brought those new people in, we're taking it in a new direction. And I imagine, I just have a good feeling, and there's enough uh, momentum out there just as far as the rumors and whatnot, that I do think it's going to end up being uh, Dr. Doom in the end, perhaps with like Galactus in the background as another big threat that's kind of sitting there on the horizon as we start to see the introduction of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, and there's also... Obviously, a lot of great villains that come along with those teams uh, that could be major threats for the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe as we move towards a big reboot. And I imagine we'll be seeing those characters that we've lost along the way being recast or reintroduced with younger versions of the characters. Also, there are some major rumors out there regarding the future of the X-Men in film. 
And I'm going to be talking to Doc about those this week. But obviously, that'll come out on like Sunday or whatever on Christmas Eve. So that'll be a lot of fun. And if you want more information like this, more discussion concerning these things, when I do these YouTube videos, it's a lot more giving the information, my opinions on them. When I do stuff over on the Patreon, where we do three different podcasts every single week, obviously the Geek Fix, we're going to hit on this one. Likely to get some questions about this stuff also in the Q&A with Doc. And we'll be covering it in much more detail. If you have not checked out the Patreon, I definitely suggest that one. Lots of great stuff there. And it's only getting bigger in 2024. We're already adding a couple of new shows in January. And I do have bigger plans throughout the year to kind of beef up the Patreon and make sure that I'm giving as much value as possible over there with a little bit different spin on Thinking Critical where we have more long form conversations, sort of like the comics aficionados, but they're one-on-one discussions and we have a lot of fun there. Definitely check that out. I think a lot of you would really enjoy the Patreon right now.